Hey, it's James Sean from Electrical, and today's video we're installing this three phase fuse board up on there for this big warehouse project. Hoo Let's get into this. Right, so into the job then. <clears throat> so, this is going to be a kitchen showroom. So, it's going to look pretty sick. So, it's going to have loads of different stands kind of showcasing off and showing off what they can produce. Uh, so it's a really good kitchen company. I need to ask the guy if you don't mind me doing videos on it. Sure, we'll film this and hopefully we can post this later. I'm pretty sure he'd love the free advertising. But yeah, they do great kitchens. So it's quite top-end kitchens. And uh, yeah, everything's just uh, done really well. So, but for this design then, so what we've asked him to do then, we've basically uh, got like a trap design for him and then he's just put it all together. So he's doing all the kind of mechanical works. So the views is it's, it's a product called Gripple. Um, and basically you just send it over the purlin, hang it down, and then you just clip it onto e either side of the trace. It's super easy. Uh, so that's this works he's been doing. So it'll be, it'll be a massive grid, and then these little black can lights that are gonna sit on there and light up this full showroom. So I think there's like 34 lights going in, so it should be super bright. Obviously you've got office up at top, and then we've got Little customer toilet. It's going to be like a like a showroom because they also do like uh, flooring and stuff like that. So uh, and then this will be the office then for the design. So there we go. What we're doing today then we're going to get the power up. She wants a temporary supply. So what we're going to have to do then is send live. So L1, L2, L3, and then neutral out of here, up into his board through a little little gland, and then we'll nick the earth off here, and that'll be it. And then we're just going to put a little ACBO in. Um, we'll probably get this containment in and we'll just put some metal clad temporary sockets here so at least they've got a bit of power. Currently we've got like a little a little generator disappearing outside uh, to get us power so we can see in here but uh, once I'm all done here they'll have to use them sockets. It's, it's a bit tight in here so we've obviously got this 150 trunk in there's a lip on the trunk in for the lid obviously there's a lip for the fuse board cover because this kind of sits over this so it actually appears like maybe four mil higher so obviously if we did it exact to that frame then the lid won't go on <laughs> so you gotta watch for stuff like that 40 mil hole saw uh 40 mil compression gland and we're going to drill out the bottom of this so we'll do that first because that'll determine how low we can go so obviously that'll be the compression glands depth so if, if if this like clashes with the wood then it'll have to go there the more but if, if it hangs out a little bit which i don't think it will it'll, it'll end up being about there and we can probably get away with that uh, maybe lift it up a little bit and then get his cables in there then so it, it, it needs to have enough room for them cables to bend in essentially or we kind of bring out the fuse board off a bit so it actually hangs it over and we've got a full, a full cable entry for his, his five cables there we go there we go so this does actually sit off enough so that's going to be perfect that if you can see that so it's not going to clash with that wooden back so we can get that fixed now then. So I think, hold it there a bit, like falling on there. Quite heavy these. <clears throat> We're gonna follow that line up then. Uh, and then there's gonna be 150 trunking. I'm gonna have to go from right, <clears throat> all the way to the left. I'm just getting an end cap on both ends. And then we can basically have loads of top entries into that 150 trunking. And then we'll cut this full slit out onto the trunking. So you've got loads of cable entries from the 150 in. Because basically if you had to get all, all like well there's 48 cable entries here and you're not going to get 48 circuits in, in here really in quick compression glands or big compression glands or whatever, however you want to do it it's not going to fit so <clears throat> it will fit if we've got that full profile to bring all the cables in uh, and we could even uh, take a big slot out the side as well and then obviously one, one, that 150 could come down and maybe stop here or whatever it could go to the floor it doesn't really matter um, but yeah, if we do that, we'll be able to cut the side of the trunk in, the side of this, and have loads of cable entries here as well. Obviously, once you get your lid on your trunk in, it's all enclosed, isn't it? So, I think that's the best bet. So, we'll have a top entry and a side entry. So, we'll have to angle grind that a little window out, mark on your trunk in once it's fitted, get it angle grind out, get it grow strips off, and then just put it up to each other. So, it should be nice and neat and sweet. Oh, there's also some data going in. <clears throat> so, there's going to be a data cab here. So, there's going to be a, a vertical trunk in here from top to bottom with the side cut out. So your data cab's going to come in, swoop in and into your data cab. So I think your best bet then 
is to, yeah, 150 trunk it across and then just a vertical down, vertical down. I think that's the best we're gonna get it. Sure. We can't put a 90 on though, because we'd have to like chop into the top of the 90 to get those data cables in. So again, I think the best bet is just to literally just butt one piece up to the other without any kind of angles on, just so we can actually get into that top cable entry. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's, uh, let's crack on with that. So we'll get this fixed next and then we'll have a look at getting the trunking cut out. Now the board is up, that's absolute solid. So what we're gonna do now is get the trunking sorted then. I know I said I said track lighting earlier, I didn't mean track, the customer's doing the track, the customer's doing the tray, this is trunking. So what we're gonna do then is get a measurement from here, all the way to here, and we'll just go to that wooden beam, maybe kick it back, maybe a few mil, just so the end cap fits on. Uh, same again for this side, and so then we'll mark it out and then get that angle grind did. Angle grinded, angle grinded it. Angle grind, I don't know. Anyway, tell me in the comments below. And then once we've done that then, we'll get a piece from here, pull it to here, and we'll just stop it there, get an end cap on there, just so it just looks nasty. But what we might do is send that piece all the way down to the floor, I haven't decided yet, but, hmm, I'm trying to think of best bet with this. Yeah, I think we might do full lengths, but we've probably got enough for that. Yeah, we're basically here just to get a temporary socket on. Obviously, you've got to do the other bits, otherwise it, it, it'll just mess you up in the future if you don't plan it out. So a lot of this is in the planning. Uh, like what breakers are going where, where you're going to put your contactors for your shop lighting, where you're going to put your SPD, stuff like that. So on this top bit then, we'll have to put uh, in this space here, because obviously 150 is coming down here. We'll have to fit like a box for the SPD and a, and a box for the contactors. Uh, what else we got? And then we've got some isolators for like heaters and stuff like that. and. Um, there's a lot of stuff going in, key switches, so we need plenty of tray work to be, to be fair to play with. But I think having a, a, a T across the top T here, yeah, we should be able to fit his contactors and bits here, and then just drill through the sides for the different controls. And I think we should have enough space to play with. Right, tips for marking out then. So you can get like a set square, and it's supposed to be square, but when I when I use a square, you put it on, and it, it, it's, got, it's got a bit of rock on it, and you never get it perfect. So I like to measure off the end get your mark, measure mark, measure mark, measure mark, all the way around. And then to make sure you get on the line then, you get your pencil and you draw on the line first. So up and down on your line and move your move your level in until you're actually drawing on the line. And then same again for down here. And then check this end again. Check that end and then draw between. Push quite hard so it doesn't move. If you don't, you, you'll be doing it. It'll go, all right? <laughs> but yeah, that's how I get a perfect, um, kind of line on the mark because you can quite easily offer it if it looks right and it is on the line but when you put your pencil on if you look it's like out slightly it's not on the line you know what I mean so also, also what, what, what angle you put it at if you like angle your pencil in like that you're going to get right on that line or slightly away from it by about a mil or two but if you if you just run your pencil across the line like that you see there's probably an, an extra two or three mil just across the edge of the pencil so there we go that's how we get detailed lines on it i know it's a bit basic Suck eggs. Safety glasses on so we don't get shards of metal in my eyes. Right, angle grinding then. So what I like to do, obviously the, the angle grinder's got a width of blade. Now we're now marking out. You mark it out to one edge, aren't you? So this is your line. Your line's like a mil, a mil and a half thick, a two mil thick, whatever. Um, now when I marked out, I marked out to this edge. So when I'm cutting, I don't want to have my cutter like here because i'll be like one two like two mil over so i, I want to make sure when, when i'm cutting it i'm taking out the line now i might have measured it the other way so i'd, I'd, I'd cut to this side of the line and i'd keep that line all the, and i'd see the line all the way to the end um but yeah just so much to take it just so much to bear in mind so when i'm actually cutting i'm cutting on the line and I'm di the line's disappearing as i'm cutting it off because i'm cutting to this side so again it's just how you get it mill perfect when you're getting your cuts What you can do is put a block of wood in it, like probably something like this actually. It's the right size as well. <laughs> Get him in. 
So you block that in, so you see it will like wanging, waggling, waggling when I cut in. You have a bit of block of wood in there, it'll just stabilise it as you cut in. So there we go, it's not too bad that. Right, time for the file then. So, when you get rid of your swarf then, your little, your little sharp bit. And then if you want it super smooth, you kind of take, imagine your edge like that, it's like nah, nah, nah. You basically uh, start rounding off that sharp edge, that, that kind of 90, so you round off, round off, round off. Go to the side, round off, round off, round off. And then the top will be like a point then. So you just go all the way around the top like this, and then it'll end up really smooth. So super light as well, like, like literally just fingertip. Do that now, it's super, super smooth. Ping pong came very natural to me, so I started playing it all the time. Right then, so this should fit up here. I would have done this. Camera purpose. There we go, it fits, obviously. And then what I've done is just drawn out there then. Let's we'll have a look, we've got a nice little nice little window. There we go, if you can see that. So we're gonna chop that out then. I'm gonna strip that up. And then get that fixed. So we'll have that, that across there, and then we'll just have to send some uprights down. So it'd be nice to get like a T-piece in and a 90, but that top 90. We need to get in at the top of the 90 for the cables to go into. All right, best bet then. So we're just gonna drill a hole bigger than a screw head, then we're gonna use a penny washer fixing. Well, let's get a nice fat two inch turn. Just so it'll fill out that red five five hole really nicely. So that's gonna sit on there like that. You, you've gotta be able to get your drill in as well. So you, you can imagine a drill coming in from the other side and it could clash with the, the inside of that then. So I think something like that. If we, if we go there for one of his fixings in yeah. Might need a new cone cutter. There we go. So that's way bigger than the head or whatever. There we go. And then once it's up there, it just means we've got loads of play. We've actually got loads of play. So obviously the penny washer will sit there and we'll be able to get it nice and perfect. Or if it needs to go up slightly because of the the fuse board's lid, obviously we need to mount it slightly higher. Uh, we've got that tolerance, so we'd have to refix as old if we slightly out. Right, this is the grommet strip we use then. So it's basically like a, it's called a car door strip. So it's just like a metal claw that grips onto it and it, and it grips it really well. It's better than the plastic stuff because that just, it's rubbish really. It, uh, it just pulls off and then you've got to put tape on it and it just looks right the dog. But with this you can fit it in, push into your corners with your driver, with your, your snip, sorry, or whatever. Bend him in, like that. Again, so I'm going to hold here and then push into that corner. Hold here and then push into that corner. Then I'm just going to overshoot to that and we chop it by about that, if you can see that. Let's just overshoot it and should. I have to pull opposite ways and just push into each other. So if I pull here, push there, pull there, should just go and then do a nice little handshake. There we go, that's the supply coming in nicely then. So I just swoop in L1, L2 and L3 and neutral. And then that swoops down then. Just get another tarp in there when we get the when, when we get the earth in. Swoops in, L1, L2, L3 and neutral. Isolator, meter. <sighs> Drives it good then. <sighs> so we're just gonna get an earth in now from there up to his earth bar. And then we can get these sockets in and then RCBO and then this job will be done. Oh yeah, look at that. Looking sexy, so that's ready to get powered up now. So obviously we have to get this RCB away and get these cables wired in. And then the sockets will be live, board cover back on, job's done. And there we go then, that's a temporary supply in, sockets on. We can finally ditch this generator and then uh, plug in there. So lads should be happy then. And uh, we'll obviously have to return to get that finished off. Uh, Alice is in Monday, Thursday, Friday next week just to help with the first fixed wiring. Because the main guy's like Rocky's leg, bless him. I've done some up with his foot, um, so he can't carry on. So we've got 
Young Ellis on it, smashing it out, and then obviously we'll be back once it's all first fixed to do the second fix and get the fuse board finished off and get everything powered up. Yeah, that's all we've got time for today then. So you see now we've got the fuse board on. We have to leave enough gap at the top for the lid to come off as well as enough gap for the grommet strip to go on. Obviously we've got the trunking on, we've got the temporary sockets on. So yeah, they're gonna be dead happy now. That's all kind of set up. So when we come back, we've just got to obviously get that upright vertical trunk in. There's enough uh, room there for all the cabling we need because it's got a massive four inch hole there. Uh, all grommeted up nicely. So yeah, we'll get a little vertical piece down, little end cap, it should look nice, neat and sweet. So yeah, if you'd like this kind of content then, hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you know when we next upload. So as always, I've gone from me and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good week.